So what we have here is a multi-switch network with a hierarchical network design and uh, two different layers. So we've got distribution layer switches and access layer switches. And in this type of network design, our devices, our end devices would be connected to our access layer switches. And our distribution layer switches would do policy management and bandwidth aggregation. And there'd be a whole bunch of different things that they would do. Now, if I were to configure VLANs, so let's say I wanted to configure two VLANs here, we'll do VLAN 10, VLAN 20. If I want to configure multiple VLANs, what I would have to do traditionally is go to each one of these switches and individually I would need to uh, configure VLANs and their names on each individual one. Now there is an easier way to do it and that is using the VTP or VLAN trunking protocol. Now with VLAN trunking protocol what we do is we set up our switches we have to put them into a VTP domain so we've got to configure a VTP domain for the network and as long as all switches are in the same VTP domain then if you configure a, VT or a VLAN on any VTP server switch all the other VTP switches will pick it up. Now you actually have three modes. You have a VTP server, which will allow you to configure uh, VLANs on that switch. You have a VTP client, which won't allow you to configure VLANs, but it will pick up VLANs from VTP servers. And then you have another one called VTP transparent, which will forward VTP messages, but it won't actually configure VLANs. So, in order for this to work, we need our interfaces to be trunk lines before we do anything else. So, I'm going to configure my trunk lines here on DL1. So, I'm going to go to config T, oops, enable, then config T, interface range, and I'm connected on F01 through 4 are my trunk lines to my access layer switches here. So interface range, and I'm going to do switch port mode trunk. And that will set all of those two trunk lines. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my lines between DL1 and DL2. And those are, go to interface range G0, 1 and 2, switch port mode trunk. Now I also want to set the same thing on my trunk lines from my DL2 to AL1 through AL4. So I'm going to go to DL2 and do that. I'm going to go to config T. Whoops. E and then config T. Interface range F01 through 4. And switch port mode trunk. Now at this point it should put all of these in trunking mode. Now I have not configured anything on my access layer switches as trunk lines. But remember Cisco switches by default use dynamic trunking protocol. And the default configuration is for auto which means if another switch requests uh, that the connection be a trunk line it will make it a trunk line. Let me speed up time here a little bit so there we go. Things finish connecting to each other. Okay. When you do that, it forces the spanning tree protocol to recalculate, and that's what was taking the delay, and that's why we just fast-forwarded time there a little bit so that we didn't have to wait for it. Okay, so now everything should be trunk line. So if I go to AL2 and do show interface trunk, I should see F01 and F02 are trunk ports. And those are my two trunk ports going to DL1, DL2. All right. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to do a show VLAN brief. And you're going to see here, let me make this a little bit bigger so it looks better. You're going to see I only have one VLAN, and that's our default VLAN 1. And then, of course, the... FDDI and token ring default ones as well. But we have no specialized VLANs on here. All right, so I'm going to go to DL1, and I'm going to start configuring VTP. So I'm going to go to, well, let's exit out of there. And from config mode, so the uh, commands to configure VTP 
you're going to do VTP question mark, and you're going to see them. We can set VTP mode, we can set the domain, we can set a password, and we can set a version number. I can also do show VTP, and the do will let me run the command, a show command from global config. And we can look at our VTP for specific lines. Um, I don't really care to do that at the moment. Uh, let me do a show VLAN brief here. Do show VLAN brief. There we go. Type in the right commands. Do show VLAN brief. There we go. And you'll see we've got the same thing. Alright, so for our VTP configuration, uh, I'm going to set, by default, uh, I'm already at a server. So by default, all uh, VLANs or all switches are configured as VTP servers. So I'm just going to set a VTP domain name of network. Now the domain name by default is not set. So when I do VTP domain network, it changes it from null to network. So what that does, I did it here, but that sends out a VTP notification to everything else saying, hey, you now are a in the VTP network, or you're in a VTP domain named network. And as long as they were previously null, then it will switch them all. Now, if they were previously part of another domain, it won't change them. But if they didn't have a VTP network or a VTP domain before, now it does. All right, so now let me configure my VLANs. I'm going to say VLAN 10 name, let me capitalize this so it stands out, example, VLAN 20 name sample because I'm feeling really creative today. All right, so now when I end, I can do show VLAN brief, and you'll see that I have my extra VLANs created. I've got VLAN 10 and 20. Now, what about all my other switches? The reason we do this is so that we don't have to configure VLANs on everything. So now, if I go to privileged exec mode, show VLAN brief, you're going to see that I have VLAN 10 and 20 now configured. I did this on number 4. We hadn't looked at number 4 yet. We had looked at number 2. So let me go back to number 2. We'll just show it on the same one. So we had nothing. Now if I do a show VLAN brief, here is my 10 and 20. And so it's automatically pushed out my VLANs and uh, my VLAN descriptions. That's why I use VTP. Now, one thing that VTP will not do is it will not manage port assignments. So if I go to this switch, which is my VTP server, technically all of them are, but the one that I set it on, and I configure ports and specific VLANs, it won't push those down to other switches. It will push out the VTP configure, the VLAN configuration, but not the port assignments. Port assignments still manually have to be done across every uh, switch. So using VTP saves us a little bit of time in that it makes it so we don't have to go through and create VLANs on every single switch. Uh, but it doesn't save us the time of assigning ports to VLANs on every single switch. So that's an important thing to know. Uh, the biggest issue with VTP, it does save us time and that's great, but the biggest thing with it is it allows us to keep things consistent. So I have VLAN 10 and 20 that we created using are on DL1. Let's say I wanted to come here and I wanted to create another VLAN. So I'm going to go to config T. I'm going to type VLAN 30 name test. And I'm going to create that here on AL1. Now if I go back to my distribution layer switch number one, DL1 where I created the first two, remember we said all um, switches are VTP servers by default. Show VLAN brief. 
and you'll see we have VLAN 30 that is propagated back. Now if I don't want to be able to create a VLAN on specific switches, so let's say AL4, we want it to get VLANs, but we don't want it to we don't want to be able to create VLANs here. You do a show VLAN brief again here and you'll see that we've gotten the one we set up on another switch. We'll go to config T and remember our VTP commands what we're looking for is a VTP mode, which lets us configure the VTP device mode. So I'm going to do VTP mode client, and that's going to make it a client mode instead of a uh, server mode switch. So now if I go to create a VLAN, VLAN 40, it says, yeah, you can't do that when you're in client mode. All right. So that's just a brief rundown of how we will configure VLANs using VTP.